Welcome to this screencast. Uh, we are going to use a uh, movie clip symbol in uh, Victorian Giotto in order to create an animation inside an animation. Here's one I made earlier. You can see that the character is crossing the screen, which was done with um, a motion twin. But as it's crossing the screen, the character itself is animated. This is done by having what's called a movie clip symbol. It appears here in the library right at the bottom. In the main file, all I have is the motion twin for the movie clip going from one end of the screen to the other. Here's a fresh, empty uh, file. And the movie clip, it's a little bit hidden, hidden inside the Giotto. You need to go to the Insert menu and you choose Symbol. So this is going to be my worker. It's movie clip. And now that I've created it, it's here in the library and you can see it's selected in blue. So this is what I'm working on. My worker is made of three layers. Um, I've got a body layer which is just a rectangle for the body, is the head, I'm using the brush to draw an arm. Now none of this is working, none of this is going to be animated. Um, next I need to add two layers, one for each leg, so that I can do my animation for each leg independently of the other. So this is uh, leg two, here's leg. Let's say this is maybe this many frames we're going to need. Um, let's uh, let's uh, just uh, insert a keyframe over there. So the body has got all of that. We might have to adjust that later. I'm going to lock the body. I don't want to modify anything in it. And then right now I'm going to be working on leg one with a brush. Very briefly, here's my first leg. And here's my second leg. This is what I'm going to animate. Um, I'm going to work on the second leg first. And here we go. Insert a keyframe. And let's uh, very simply use the free transform to rotate the leg. But I want the leg to rotate around the hip. So I've clicked on that little white dot and I'm moving it to where the hip is roughly and then bring the mouse next to one of the corner of my shape and just rotate it just a little bit. Repeat that for a few more frames. All right. And let's do the same thing for the other leg. Insert a keyframe, move the center of rotation, the pivot point, move it where the hip is, and rotate the leg a little bit, and again, a little bit more. Now, it would be much easier to do this if I could see where the previous frames are, and it is possible to do that with the onion skin. You activate it by clicking on that little blue button over here. Now see how I can see uh, vaguely transparent the where, where the legs were located in the two previous frames and that's going to help me uh, draw or move or rotate the object just a little bit more for each frame. So here's a few more. Now eventually for this to work I need to bring this leg close to where the previous, the other leg was at the start of the cycle. To see that, I need to see more of his onion skin. If I bring the mouse on the timeline over there, there's two brackets that have appeared when I've activated onion skin. Here they are, you can see them. Now, when I select these brackets, the mouse pointer changes to hand and I can widen so now I can see all the onion skins, all the way to the first one. So this should help me to um, make this leg finish. So this is the last frame I want to use. 
and I want that last frame to be to almost coincide with the first frame of the overlay. That will be good for this one. Now let's do the same for the other one, except that I'm not going to rotate much more than that. We're not walking with our leg ending up no, horizontal in our back. I need to bring this leg back towards the front. How do I do that? So let's insert a keyframe. Um, and this time, I don't actually want to rotate this. I want to redraw it as if the knee was bending. So it's selected, press delete on my keyboard. Now, I did add a keyframe, but I don't see the leg in that keyframe. I just deleted it. So I can redraw it. Now, I want to move slightly towards the front with the knee bent. Next time, next frame, I'm going to insert a blank keyframe, so I don't have to bother with deleting uh, the previous one. And again, draw with the knee slightly bent. And I'm starting to run out of keyframes at this stage. So let's bring the other leg on the screen as well. Now you can see that I have to go quite a long way uh, in order to almost coincide. So let's uh, one more. Oops, I, um, I wanted to do an empty one. So Control Z to undo, insert empty, a blank keyframe. This way I can draw it with now I need to get very, very close to where the other leg starts from. I cannot draw very well. All right, that should be OK. Um, let's deactivate the onion skin. Otherwise, when I test this, I can't really see what's going on. So untick the onion skin back to the first frame. All right. Oh, that char character is working. That will be fine for this. Remember, I am I'm editing, I'm working inside this uh, movie clip symbol called Walker. I want to go back to the movie. Show the main movie over here. Go to movie. Um, so the movie is empty. I All the work I've done so far is saved inside this component of a library here. The main movie. So I click on the little icon for the movie clip and I bring it onto the stage. There it goes. I want it to start off the stage. And let's give it quite a few uh, keyframes to cross the stage. We can even make it a little bit bigger as if it was walking across and towards us slightly. Insert our motion twin. Oh, the onion skin tool is still activated. Um, let's hide that. Now, when I do this, I can just see the motion twin. It's not going to show me the, uh, the whole animation inside an animation until I export this. Now, once I've exported that, and I bring it onto the screen, here's the result. An animation inside an animation. Thank you for uh, listening to this uh, screencast, and I look forward to uh, seeing your advanced animation skills in your work.